more, but my Seiko is. Seiko, it's just your style. It's perfect. It is. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today we are reviewing an extremely special and quite rare watch indeed. I've got to say a massive thank you to Moya Jewelers. A uh, big shout out to Derek in particular for making this video possible and lending in this absolute stunner. Uh, if you're not familiar with Moya Jewelers, I've actually used them. I would only ever recommend somebody I've personally uh, bought and sold to. In fact, I sold them my Rolex Submariner and I was extremely pleased with the service. They are very professional indeed and an authorized dealer for many, many illustrious brands uh, and of course Seiko as well. So here we are uh, with this absolutely gorgeous piece. Now, today is something very special because this is part of a trilogy of dive watches released to commemorate the 55 year anniversary of Seiko making dive watches. Uh, but before we get into the history of the brand, a little bit of context where we are with um, Seiko as a brand. Now, it's no secret I have been rather critical over the last year with some of their latest releases. It has been rather hit or miss. Their increase in prices has not been about natural inflation. It's more a brazen attempt to go more upscale. They do deserve it, but in repositioning the brand and by collaborating with uh, you know the so-called uh, uh, watch publications, it has alienated a lot of the original fans. Uh, has Seiko lost the common touch uh, in trying to woo the the yuppie crowd, the sweater over the the shoulder crowd? You know, uh, well, let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, so last year I finally reviewed the. Seiko, uh, it was the uh, Prospects SPB015 uh, cracking watch, came out originally in 2017, and that also echoes the design of the 1965 original 62 Mass, which this obviously takes uh, style cues from, well, v very much more so than that particular watch um, that we reviewed in the past. Now, I remember feeling largely underwhelmed. It seems that it was a rather uninspired, almost rushed in execution. But as always, Seiko has triumphantly returned uh, with this absolutely heavenly creature from the deep. But as always, a little bit of backstory for those uninitiated. As we have discussed, Seiko's illustrious, rich legacy uh, and history endlessly on the channel. In fact, in many videos uh, just about their history and why they are, in my opinion, the greatest watch brand of all time, I will keep this, well, I'll attempt to keep this brief. In case you're not aware, Seiko's long list of achievements and innovations um, since its founding in 1892 in Tokyo, Japan, is unparalleled in the watch world. From being the first to invent quartz watches uh, in 1969, um, to the first quartz chronographs and later Seiko Kinetics, Spring Drive and innovations with solar and digital watches, the list of um, firsts is absolutely endless. You can start to see why I made standalone videos um, just about this very subject without even a watch being included to review. It's also worthy to point out, and this will become uh, more apparent later when discussing today's watch, is value. Seiko covers all price points like no other brand in the world. From entry level, super affordable mechanical watches under $100, which is close to impossible uh, if you don't have the uh, infrastructure and manufacturing capabilities. The Seiko 5 line, for example, or to luxury watches like the Grand Seiko and even super high-end Turbions with their Creda brand, uh, which was specifically designed to compete with the best of uh, Switzerland or Germany. Aside from always leading technologically and their brand's historic vicissitude, this spirit and coolness permeated uh, its way into the public consciousness over the decades by gracing the wrists of movie stars, James Bond endorsements, and the watches have affectionately earned countless nicknames, uh, which I've also done a top 20. Check that out if you missed it. But when it comes to dive watches, Seiko was actually a little late to the game. 
While the Swiss had secured their dominance in the field in the 50s, it was not until 1965 that Seiko entered uh, the game with the iconic 16-2 Mass Automatic. But just like anything Seiko does, it soon caught up. In 1966, the watch had proved its reliability and capability in the 8th Japanese Antarctic Research Expedition. What followed was a 300-meter diver with the highest of world standards in uh, high beat caliber which was 10 vibrations a second and that was in 1968 by the 70s uh, while the rest of the world was starting to really feel the effect of um, the quartz crisis which Seiko <laughs> obviously uh, inadvertently started they also introduced uh, quartz technology into their dive watches uh, they simultaneously conquered the extreme depths with the world's first professional 600 meter diver with a titanium case in 1975 and on the bequest of a professional saturation diver the result was the first tuner being born the model featured a world-class corrosion proof shock resistant airtight case the accordion style band and over 20 patents licensed for the exterior alone in 1978, the professional diver's 600 meter would become the world's first saturation diver to feature a quartz movement, which inevitably led to the inclusion of any digi technology. And in 1982, we saw the creation of the now famous Arnie. Uh, this hybrid 150 meter diver was provided with an alarm system, chronograph, bilingual display. The innovation would continue way into the um, 80s and 90s with the world's first 1,000 meter diver with a ceramic outer case, and that was in 1986. And then there was the first computerized diver in 1990. That was the Scuba Master, and that was equipped with a water sensor and a depth sensor. Uh, vital information, obviously, for divers. Uh, these features are very commonplace, but it was Seiko doing it all before the rest of the brands. Um, over the last few decades, Seiko has added many complications, new materials, technology, and even spring drive to their divers, while the rest of the world has kind of stopped innovating in this particular field. Let's not forget that. <laughs> As always, let's start out with dimensions. It's just a flick under 39 millimeters. Uh, it is worthy to note that the bezel overhangs, so it actually wears a little bit smaller. I would say it wears like a 38, to be honest. It's 14.3 tall. Lug to lug, we're looking at 47.2 and a 19.5 millimeter lug width. So I'm guessing this will be a 19 millimeter uh, rubber strap. Regarding the scale, I believe it's 1.9 millimeter big in diameter, but pretty much all the other measurements are very close to the, um, the original. Um, and it's worthy to point out that this is 200 meters water resistant, as you see on the dial, compared to the original 1965 being 150. The weight is around, uh, I think, 114 grams, so very substantial considering its more um, restrained scale. Now what is fascinating about this particular watch, and this is why I, I, I was adamant to mention materials and their innovation in the history section, the steel used in this is called Ever Brilliant Steel, which is Seiko's very own uh, concoction. It has a quite a distinctive brilliant white hue that gives the trilogy very much a unique look. This grade of steel is more corrosion resistant than um, uh, your conventional 904L um, and other steels used in uh, watchmaking. In fact, it's 1.7 times harder to be exact. And this is actually the first time it's ever been used in a watch. So very, very cool indeed. The material is used extensively in the surfaces, linings, bolts, and other components of marine structures and vessels. Uh, deliberately obviously to avoid corrosion in a chloride rich environment such as salt water. According to Seiko it presented many many challenges uh, in the manufacturing process of these cases uh, but thanks to the experience and new techniques developed by the Seiko team um, they were able to overcome these challenges and the ever brilliant steel is now um, set to bring a new level of durability to modern dive watches. 
of course, for the luminescence, we have the world's famous and uh, very loved Lumi Bright, which is just incredibly vivid and long lasting, reacting fast to um, any particular light sources. And it's on all the hands, uh, also generously applied to the markers, which are applied markers, along with the bezel pip. It has quite an effective orientation, thanks to the 12 o'clock loom marker being larger. And of course, we get this box sapphire with anti-reflective coating on the inner surface. The band material is uh, silicon. It's nicely textured for grip on uh, either sides, uh, also for added comfort. It's interesting, they've done the perforations all the way up the strap. It's quite a long strap. And then on the outside, we have uh, this kind of basket weave pattern um, that gives it the very kind of retro-licious look, indicative of that kind of period and very much evokes that, that vintage vibe. It's quite soft and supple, and, and but uh, at the same time, rigid enough to support the watch. Now for the bezel, they've gone 120 click, unidirection, and I have to say, it sounds a bit like a SKX bezel, but the action to it is so solid, it's very tight, but yet easy to, um, to grip and, and turn and manipulate. Lines up absolutely perfect. Very, very impressed with that. Um, this is probably one of the finest, well, actually the finest bezel I've ever uh, felt on a Seiko dive watch. And I would say it's comparable to my ceramic sub, so definitely has a luxurious feeling of quality. The insert, I'm not totally sure about. I couldn't find out online. I'm guessing it's ceramic. If anybody knows what this material is, please do comment down below. Now inside, as we turn it over, I have kept the sticker on because of course I'm borrowing this and these are in such uh, low amount. Uh, I, I really didn't want to take the sticker off but the inside caliber is the movement 8L55 uh, this is a 2009 variation of the Grand Seiko 9S85 movement but uh, it has a different finishing but essentially the same thing and it is a cousin of course of the 8L35 uh, but has some improvements for example it operates at a high uh, speed of uh, 36,000 vibrations an hour, giving it an absolute buttery smooth sweep. 37 joules, uh, and naturally its power reserve is also a bit higher. It can hold about 55 hours. Its higher frequency also makes it theoretically more precise. I should also mention it is probably the highest uh, caliber of uh, automatic movement that isn't the spring drive uh, and, and above. Seiko throughout the 1960s with the Lord Marvel series pioneered these high beat movements uh, and they were among the most accurate watches ever produced by the company, uh, winning many awards and beating many accuracy competitions. It is also very alluringly decorated with um, quite deep striping, engraved then lacquer filled text and magnificent high polish beveling. The accuracy out of the factory, well, it's stated at about plus 15 to minus 10, but um, I can say that in reality, this one is like, well, it's it's within cost. So um, actually it's just spot on. Uh, obviously we have quick set date, manual wind and hacking included, as you would imagine on something on the higher end spectrum. Well, there's a lot of subtle embellishment here. The attention to detail is just exquisite. For example, the framing of the date window, uh, the off silver metallic looking date wheel. So it kind of matches the indices, the proportions, the concentrics brushing on the tops of the lugs and then that the mirror polishing on the sides. It's just absolutely perfectly done seamless transitions, very sh razor sharp. And then of course it's echoed even on the buckle, that, that brushed edge, uh, the beveling on the keeper, the etched Seiko. I mean, no expense has been spared. It doesn't scream at you in luxury, but you certainly feel it. This is one of the most beautifully made Seikos I've ever experienced. And, and I've worn and, and reviewed a fair amount of Grand Seikos too. So it's definitely up there. Talking of signage, uh, well, of course we get a signed crown, which is lovely. Uh, I should mention this is obviously it's a screw down, uh, no lug guards, so it's very in keeping with that uh, 62 mass aesthetic. 
I'm glad it's signed. That was uh, one of the disappointing details of the SP. B051 and look at the shape of the case this wonderful arched kind of section uh, and the way the bezel sits on it this particular space here reminds me a little bit like the um, squalene 1521 with these angled off uh, lugs it's uh, it's very cool the box sapphire sits in a manner that evokes kind of vintage Tudors again this reminds me actually of my vintage Tudor Submariner and gives quite pleasing distortions I love the way they've included the inner ring there in a high polish that um, really evokes a kind of maritime water uh, look now we really got to talk about that blue because it is sumptuous I mean it is absolutely bewitching it's a very pleasing blue uh, I've never seen a blue like it. I would say it's a, um, sometimes it's an Aegean blue and in other lights it's quite dark and more of a peacock blue uh, verging on kind of grey, complemented by the, the, the strap perfectly, which I would say is a kind of uh, Air Force blue. And I think it works wonderfully with the glossy black bezel insert there. And we should also mention the texture of that dial. It's not exactly a sun ray effect but almost it's a little bit more subtle than that uh, the hash marks are in an off-white again in keeping with the color scheme and play nicely with the periphery of the dial with that water effect that it uh, tends to have with that inner ring there one thing i do love and if you look at the hands they're gently faceted and they reach perfectly to the corresponding hours and minutes uh, the hours just touching the edge of those quite raised applied um, markers and then of course we have the paddle style for the seconds that almost touches the edge it works very well i have to say so let's discuss the positives well first of all it's an excellent size it's beautifully proportioned uh, I, I think any bigger it wouldn't feel vintage any smaller it, it just wouldn't please the the crowd it's also totally in-house produced I mean absolutely everything from start to finish a very very rare achievement um, in a watch brand these days it's insanely perfect in quality this is truly a, a luxury watch unquestionably it's also a very limited run of only 1100 so it will undoubtedly protect its value i think it's a alluring design um, it's faithful to the original while bringing new technology to the table which i think is very important now despite being a collector's piece it still absolutely performs impeccably well it delivers it's a formidable dive watch uh, but at the same time it's quite elegant and i think you could almost argue it's a do-it-all watch, uh, possibly even one-piece collection status, you know, which is that kind of do-it-all watch, uh, a bit like the Rolex Explorer or, or something of, of, of that nature. Um, and I have to say, it's definitely going to be a strap monster. Uh, I love how they've included drill lug holes, so you can just pop uh, straps in and out. Imagine this on the Collareb or... Uh, a NATO strap I mean any kind of rubber strap it, it's just the kipper's knickers so it definitely has that kind of versatility one of the big positives for me I have to say uh, I, I really like the smooth high beat seconds it's very pleasing to see it's kind of mesmerizing it's um it reminds me a little bit of my Bulova space view I mean obviously not that um, high frequency but it's a welcome change from the stuttering calibers that I'm used to from Seiko not that there's anything wrong with that but it's very refreshing to see indeed ah the negatives well what can we say about this particular watch well being limited edition it's not going to be accessible to many people um, that is definitely a downside if only they would put this out on general release I think it'd be an absolute hit it, it, it's the best Seiko dive watch I've ever experienced yeah it will protect the resale value but it seems to me that Seiko are uh, well back in the day they kept all the best stuff for their domestic market that then changed but now they're keeping the best stuff in limited editions and this kind of goes into what I was saying earlier about a lot of the great Seikos are kind of not within the reach of the majority of the people. And it's expensive. I mean, this is $6,300 at retail. Uh, while I do think it is actually worth it, 
if you take into consideration what it is and its quality all the rest of it but it is far away from the honest uh, tool watch roots that made Seiko so great but I guess at the end of the day that is what the prospects line is for right I mean if you want a professional you know non-luxury tool watch I have to say that the case back is a tad boring while I understand that being faithful um, to the original uh, I would have liked to see something a little bit more with some more pizzazz so to speak uh, you know maybe it's because I just reviewed the Dan Henry with his absolutely ravishing screw down case backs um, I just would like to have seen something a bit more involved that's all yeah it does feel like a missed opportunity slightly but you know what not the end of the world and also the 19 millimeter lug width I've said it several times with the Yema watches, they love to do this too. Uh, it's, it's a pain to source straps for. I don't understand the odd numbers. I think this could have been a 20. So in conclusion, while at first glance it may not seem all that different, its understated look is deceiving. It's innovative in its construction, an almost perfectly updated recreation that brings honor um, to the brand you really feel like no corner has been cut here uh, this is probably the the perfect vintage inspired Seiko um, well that I've experienced so far if Seiko was to create this for wider release uh, I think it would be up there with uh, the Submariners and the Seamasters without a shadow of a doubt this is meravigliosa undiluted pure class now guys don't forget to add your thoughts queries comments opinions all the rest of it down below please don't forget to like this video especially if you want to see more reviews on seiko watches or watches like this do like this video uh, thank you very much for watching and i will catch you in the next one okay ciao